Oh, hello, and uh, welcome to uh, the VK60 Amateur Radio Channel. Now, uh, I've heard um, uh, one or two people mention what sort of tuners should they get for, for HF and uh, this, that and the other, and I think I showed you that fairly um, uh, small tuner that I bought uh, for portable use, and um, I've used it for portable use, it works quite well. And I've got a larger tuner as well for a, bit, a little bit more power. But um, anyway, I'm uh, sort of going off a bit here at a tangent. Um, I, uh, I got an email from an old mate of mine who uh, I, uh, I worked with uh, about 25 years ago. And he's got an ICOM 720A that he got off. Uh, you can tell how, in, how into amateur radio he is. He's got, he's got an ICOM IC720A he got off a yacht in Fort Lauderdale in 1994. Um, because uh, he was in the uh, in the super yacht electronics business, and uh, so was I at the time. Come to think of it, um, and uh, he's just getting back into amateur radio. He's got an 80 foot wire antenna, and he wants to know what would be the best way of tuning it. Now, um, what would be the best way of tuning it? Now, the problem is that uh, Angus tells me his budget is. Uh, 30 to 40 quid now um, in Angus as you as you probably guessed is from Scotland and uh, he's also got a ham radio license you know it's a pretty bad combination when it comes to spending money getting money out of a radio ham is difficult I'm trying to get money out of a Scottish radio ham is I would imagine no an impossible so 30 or 40 quid for a, for, a, for a tuner is probably quite generous in the mind of Angus but anyway, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you've probably noticed me nose the camera there, but I'm going to try and come up with something. Now, there are quite a few different types of tuners. Um, the simplest one is an L-match. And what the L-match does is uh, you've got an input, you've got an output, you've got uh, an inductor, like that. And um, you have a variable capacitor like that. And depending on, uh, you, you also need a ceramic switch. Like that. I'll show it. I'll show it switch to one position, and that position is the high impedance position. Okay. So this, if you switch this capacitor to this side of the inductor it will match high impedance and if you switch it to this side it will be low okay so if this impedance here presented by if that's your transmitter uh, if this load here is a high impedance load you would have that switch to that side and if you if, if it's a low impedance load you would have that capacitor there switched to that side and this is an L this is called an L match simply because it looks like the configuration of an L so if you could, if you if this capacitor was not switchable from one end to the other, if you had that capacitor was there, that resembles an L, and if it was at the other end, that resembles an L. Okay, this is probably one of the cheapest tuners you can get or make. Um, the advantages of this tuner is that um, it will uh, only give you one tuning solution. A lot of the other tuners or matches to be more precise because you're not actually tuning the antenna you're matching this impedance here to this impedance here so if this impedance here is 50 ohms you know this could be I don't know 280 ohms uh, for, for, uh, for argument's sake so all you're doing is you're adjusting this here to present to make this 280 ohms look like 50 ohms there this doesn't change. This remains at 280 ohms. When you finish tuning, everything's happy. This is still 280 ohms. So, um, and you know, it's, uh, it's it's not actually tuning the antenna as such. It's just matching the impedance. But call it tuner, matcher. It's it's just a general uh, terminology. What the hell do I do with my sponge? Bloody marvellous. Okay, so you might want to consider this one, Angus, because all you've got to do is buy one capacitor. Um, you want that to be a uh, variable inductor. Uh, so you'll be able to adjust the uh, adjust the inductance, and then you can switch the capacitor and um, and decide uh, 
uh, where you get your best match. So you, this will only give you one tuning solution. You, so if, you, if it gives you a tuning solution, it's not the wrong one. It's going to be the most. Uh, it's going to be the most efficient tuning solution. Hang on a sec. Uh, bloody sponge. Macron, I don't know. I'll have to change my name to Cecil B. <laughs> DCS. There you go. Uh, right, so this is the L match. You could make one of those. That would be pretty cheap. All you need is a box, variable inductor, and a uh, variable capacitor and a ceramic switch. Or if you were really. Uh, If you didn't want to use a if you didn't want to use a ceramic switch, you could just use banana plugs, banana sockets, something like that. It'd probably be okay. Then you have then you have the T match, and the T match is got an input goes through a capacitor goes through another capacitor to the output, and you have a variable inductance going down to ground and uh, some of them will actually have uh, another inductance there so you can't actually short the thing out, short the, uh, short the RF path out. Okay so how are we doing for time? Six minutes? That's okay. So this one is a T-match and the T-match will give you a very wide range of tuning solutions uh, of, of uh, matching impedances sorry so you can have um, you know a greater variance of uh, impedances here and it will still match them to the 50 ohms here you get 50 ohms there so if that was 280 ohms it's still going to match it you'll still match it but this T match will actually give you more than one tuning solution okay so you do have to fiddle around with it a little bit to uh, uh, get the optimum tuning solution with a T-match. And the T-match will be it's the most efficient when you've got most capacitance in series and the least inductance to the ground. So uh, uh, that's the, uh, the T-match. So you might want to consider one of those, Angus, because all you need to do is get you know, one roller inductor. Um, you can put a few turns, uh, air wound turns, just on the bottom of that to ground, just to uh, just to keep it off, so you can you, you don't short the RF path to deck. A couple of capacitors and a box, and again this is just matching 280 ohms there to 50 ohms there. This 280 ohms remains the same when it's all finished, done and dusted, and you've got a good match here. That's the team match. Now I'm not going to do a Z match because I looked at that and I thought I'm not going to draw that. <laughs> it's just too complicated and I couldn't be bothered and no one in their right mind is going to make one. They'll make a T match or they'll make an L match. You might, might, you might make a Pi match. Oh and of course the T match was because of the two capacitors and the uh, and the inductor to ground. So it looked, you've got the inductor like that and you've got the capacitors like that so it looks like a T so they call it T match. Um, now, there is a variation of the T match called the SPC, which is uh, you've got the input, goes through a capacitor, goes through a capacitor, like that. Very similar, I hear you cry, even from here. Okay, and you have the variable inductor. The ground like that, but you also have another capacitor here, like that. Now this one's called the SPC. I call that 280 ohms again. Okay, so the SPC match. Now what this does, this is the series parallel capacitance uh, type match. It's practically the same as a T match, except it's got this extra capacitance here. And what this does is, this is actually ganged with that. I just drew this so that you could get an idea of, uh, of what this is doing. So it's a T-match. This is exactly the same as a T-match, this bit here. The inductor to ground, same as a T-match. Extra capacitor across the inductor is actually 
a ganged capacitor. So what that what that looks like really is like this. And that's the output there. Okay? And these are ganged. And what that means is you've got one knob, you've got one knob on this capacitor, and when you turn it, both of these this is this is all one capacitor. These are on one shaft. So as you as you tune it for um, um, uh, to, to to match the uh, to match the input, this capacitor is actually um, shunting frequencies outside of the, of the frequency that you're interested in uh, to ground in the in the SPC. And the, this will match a, a fairly wide range of uh, impedances as well. So very very similar to the T match, not quite as efficient as the, as the T match, um, but um, by all accounts you'd need laboratory equipment to see the difference. Um, um, so a little more complicated to make, and you've got to get hold of the um, uh, the split rotor uh, capacitor. So uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a fairly easy thing to build, and this is actually the circuit diagram of my big tuner. Um, my high power tuner is uh, is this configuration. I've been thinking of changing it actually to an L just to see what difference it makes. Do some experiments with it. Now we're doing for time, 11:41. That's not bad. So you might want to consider making that. You still only need uh, two capacitors. As I say, this one's a little more complex, so it might be a bit more expensive. A variable inductance, um, roller inductor is better, but you could use a, uh, you could have a switch there and just tap turns on the inductor. Okay. And then you have the Pi type tuners, and the Pi tuner. You know, it's not like a, it doesn't have a crust on it or anything like that. It's a called pi, like pi, pi, yeah, because it sort of resembles the pi uh, signal, uh, symbol. So it comes in, got an inductor, output, like that, and you have a variable capacitor there, like that, and another one there, like that. There we go, and you'd have that either 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 have, have that as a variable or as a, uh, a switchable uh, inductor okay so you can see the pie shape there and that's the that's why they call them a pie tuner or you see them on the output for, of uh, valve amplifiers as well uh, called a pie tank so if that was a if that was a pie tank that would just go through that would go through a blocking capacitor to a valve anode Something like that, RF choke, HT, something like that. So that's the rough configuration for a Pi tank um, output tuning on a transmitter, and um, just the uh, just the Pi part of it you can use as a tuner. That won't give you as wide a range as the um, not the bloody camera again as the uh, um, the T-match. Uh, the T-match is by far the most common um, antenna matching unit used. But um, anyway, that's just uh, uh, something that I thought might be uh, might be useful. Um, people may not be aware of these different types of tuners. Um, remember that uh, I was I was listening actually to the, this morning on the radio, and someone was saying. What uh, what voltage uh, capacitors are we talking about here? And um, you can you can sort of work out the the, the voltage values of the capacitors um, for uh, antenna tuning units. So I mean you can the um, if you uh, if you've got an antenna analyzer and you know the impedance of the antenna, the um, the voltage across there is the square root of the um, uh, the output power multiplied by the impedance. So output power multiplied multiplied by the impedance, and the square root of that will give you the uh, the actual voltage. So you can calculate the voltage you're going to need, or the voltage that will be across here. 
Okay. And <laughs> that's me leaving the radio on again. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm going to run over and turn the radio off. I'm sure the, uh, there's a couple of, a couple of the local guys on the repeater there, I'm sure they won't mind if they appear on the video. If they do, I'm sure they won't be shy in letting me know. Right, okay. So, you could consider any of those Angus. But, um, I say Angus is a, is a friend of mine, so this email was a, it was a private email. So there's no email address on the, uh, on the site. I've been toying with the idea of putting an email address on the site to, uh, um, see if I can answer some questions for you but um, I haven't got around to it yet um, but bearing in mind Ang Ang Angus's budget of, of 30 to 40 quid um, and the fact that he's not terribly into amateur radio he's kept his license up but he hasn't been uh, hasn't been doing much for the last 25 years I think your best bet for tuning your wire antenna Angus uh, your cheapest option uh, is this tuner here and I uh, I do have one that uh, I prepared earlier. Here we go. Uh, cost about, uh, I think these were about eight bucks. And uh, you can just trim bits off of uh, your 80 feet of wire and uh, uh, until you get a match. So I hope you found that, uh, hope you found that useful. Uh, thanks for watching, as always. I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time.